Welcome to the Loan with Jen podcast. Whether you're listening in or tuning in with us on YouTube, special treat for today. Today's episode is for the new investor. So if you're toying with the idea of buying your first or your second property, this is the episode for you. And I have a really special guest today, Scott Roberts. Scott has been in the business since the 80s. Uh, He's worked for the FDIC. He's managed a big mortgage company. Uh, He's also been in tech. You've been in in the early 2000s. He was he was in finance tech, which is was way over my head. I was glazed (laughs) over. And most recently, he's actually he's a private investor. Uh, And we're going to talk about what that means. So this is part one of a two part series. Part one is deciding what type of investor you want to be. Do you want to flip? or do you want to buy and hold and and rent? So these are these are active investor. We're not talking about passive investor today. So mm-hmm. Scott, let us know cuz you're really in the active investor community. Yes. So tell us give give us a summary of what that means. Okay, well it's Jen pleasure to be with you today. Thank yeah. you so much. Um so I am an uh, active investor and private lender. So um what I do typically is lend uh, my own money um, to people who want to uh, buy an investment property, it, for and we loan money in a short-term basis, okay. and then they, the folks typically after a certain period of time will refinance us out and get either conventional lending or something of that nature. So let's mm. talk about when you're first before the financing <clears throat> comes in, which is actually yep. going to be our part two. Yep. Uh, so we want you to stick around for that. So. First, like let's say, let's say I've got my job. I'm 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 a W two yep. employee or sure. whatever my day job is, and I'm like, you know what? I've got my primary residence. I really want to buy that first property. So, let's talk about the pros and the cons of both. Just an overview of buying and holding. You know, renting out, mm-hmm. or do I want to do I want to flip? Great. Let's you pick which one we talk about first. Well, let's talk about rental property first. Okay, um, perfect. So uh, obviously, um, if you own rental property, that's more of a business, and um, there's different considerations than, or, than you would have probably than if you were doing flipping. So uh, the good news on rental property is that buying and holding is probably the best way to make the the big money, if you will, big money. So uh, large investment returns are usually made by waiting. They're really, the biggest money isn't usually in the real short term. Um, So that's something to consider. And you want to make sure that that's the mentality that you have if you want to buy rental property. Would would you say that it's because the property is appreciating, really? I mean, you're not going to become a a gazillionaire from the monthly rent that you get to that really offsets the mortgage. Exactly right. It's in the appreciation, right? It's it's in the appreciation, but you want to be paid in the meantime while the house is appreciating or the property is appreciating. You don't want to be feeding a negative cash flow Mm -hmm. each month and hoping for appreciation. Although some people do that and sometimes it can work. It's much, it's higher risk. So So if you had to summarize in a, super succinct bubble Mm -hmm. when you're looking at a property. I know there's a lot that goes into it, but when you're out looking, um, let's just say your first one, you're you're really going to buy it off the MLS, you know, the multiple listing service. Not there's a lot of private behind the scenes, courthouse steps, et cetera, that you can do. But let's just say you're out looking at property. what what percent appreciation do you look for in an area that's appreciating? Is it five percent, ten percent? Like, do you even well? Look that's at a it really that good way? question. It, it, it's that is going to change over, um, in the short term and the longer term. Mm-hmm. So you, what you want is a play, a um, neighborhood, an area that is not at all depreciated. Okay. You want to check ever. that carefully. Ever. Okay. You want to be where. Um, the economy and local business is moving to that particular area. Okay. Okay. That's very important. And you want to know how to evaluate that. Um, so uh, there's different ways to do that. We won't go in that right, into that right now. But um, that's extremely important. The most important thing you can do is to be able to evaluate different markets um, that you're considering being in. So if something is flat, well, 
do you anticipate that that's going to go up or is it going to come down? Yeah. You, you want to be in the area of appreciation where it's happening. It, per, it, I guess the perfect situation would be where it's starting. It's mm -hmm. starting. Starting, it's starting to grow. But on the curve, you always want to be on this side of it, not this. I would say that crucial first step, I mean, definitely sounds like having a realtor. I mean, especially for that first one, someone who really knows that market area and knows how to feed you that information, uh, at least in the beginning before, you know, things can get more fancy and complicated down yeah. the line yeah. and there's investment groups and things like that. But mm -hmm. for someone that's just starting in a very simple fashion, align yourself with a good realtor that can feed you this market data to do that analysis, it sounds like. I think that's a very good idea. And I would uh, interview those people and find out what their background is and their experience mm -hmm. in investment property. Yeah, that's a good Because good a point. number of agents are great at selling homes to people that are going to live there. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit different than selling homes that are investment property. Mm -hmm. So you want to find um, agents that have a lot of experience, preferably more than you do, um, in buying uh, in rental houses. Yeah, that's a good. So let's let's switch. That, that was great advice. So let's switch to flipping. Yep. So let's say I'm just going to take it on and I'm going to buy and flip and <laughs> okay. I want that big profit yep. quick and sure. I'm ready to go. Yep. Um, number one, you have to do your homework. Um, if you just start doing that because you're excited and et cetera, et cetera, and you haven't done your homework, um, you're going to have a big you're going to have several big problems. Mm -hmm. So before you do that, you have to educate yourself. It's, it's the most important thing. The people that make uh, the biggest mistakes are those that have not done their homework, just like in anything else in life. So how do you do that? Well, there's a number of things you can do. You can certainly read. There's so much information out there. So I would start by reading. Um, there's, there's so many books. However, there's one good source of books, which is something called biggerpockets.com. Oh, I've heard of them. Yes. They have a podcast. They do have a podcast. Yeah. And they have all kinds of material. It's free um, and they have great resources and, they, and they've gotten much, much better over the years. Bigger Pockets. We'll actually put a link to that in the description of the wherever you're watching or yeah. listening to this. Awesome. Uh, um, so that's number one. Um, number two is you can go to the local uh, REAs, real estate investment associations. Okay. Um, that's a source of uh, many different um, vendors, uh, agents, other in investors. So it's a great spot to go. I would caution you to be careful about people who are um, mentors and want to charge you a lot of money mm -hmm. for their for them to teach you. Right. There's some around town that do a great job of that. But initially, in the beginning, just get information just talk yeah. to people don't go out and write a big check mm -hmm. and think someone's going to uh, give you the holy grail yeah that doesn't really exist well you need to know what you're looking for you need to educate yourself exactly right for sure exactly no right. that's that's great advice so on what's a common return that's just kind of an average if you had to say i don't even know if you can put an average on it some some projects cash in big like what's the, on a flip what's the biggest percent profit you've ever seen and what's the lowest? Oh, um, the biggest percentage well, wise. I've seen people double their money. Wow. Yeah. However, I've seen people lose money too. Mm -hmm. And the key is always how much are you purchasing the investment property for? Mm -hmm. How do you know how to evaluate what it's worth? Yeah. Those are the things that are extremely important and take time. Mm -hmm. Um, the biggest mistake I see even in experienced investors is they don't evaluate the value of the property correctly because they're motivated to buy it. Let's fix it up and they, they see the end. Mm -hmm. But you have to um, really know how to evaluate. Mm -hmm. So that's where the education and aligning yourself in your local market, because to fix a property, you're going to need contractors. You're going to need probably hard money and that's yes. we're going to go into that actually in episode two we're going to talk about money and financing because there's very few investors that pay cash <laughs> they're all about leverage usually right, right right exactly right and um often well we should say um there are people that, that pay cash yeah but um you've got to be careful of that and oftentimes they're coming to somebody like me 
and they use my cash to leverage to, yeah to leverage it exactly right so we're going that's a good segue into episode two so just to recap what we've heard basically as an active <clears throat> investor you can either buy and hold which is renting the long-term invest it as mm-hmm. investment and that really you're in it for the long term you're Longer in it for term. 10 plus years i would think you need to be patient and looking at the return exactly right exactly. and and be in a growing area so that's a great way to align yourself with a, a good realtor that has experience mm-hmm. in investment property yeah. uh and number two if you're flipping educating yourself aligning getting to know some other local investors and investment groups in your area listen to some podcasts bigger pockets we're going to put that in the uh, in the in the in the notes so yes. mm-hmm. we are going to we're going to cash out on this episode and we are going to be join us for episode number 2 and we are going to talk about money so thank you loan with Jen podcast every week we re- release a video on friday we'll see you on the next episode thank you jen thanks